What's up fam and welcome back to episode number two of Valheim. In the first episode we created ourselves a brand new little uh, starting house. We went through the basics of the first chapter uh, up to and including uh, defeating the first boss. So in this second episode we're going to be following a lot of the dark forest uh, storyline so we're going to be getting all the copper and tin, uh, improving our house and, and kind of re-expanding on our idea of what we want to do with our, our base there and uh, just continuing the resource grind so we may end up doing the second boss in this episode I, I kind of doubt it to be honest with you um, as I really want to focus on you know exploration and resource gathering and making sure that we really are set up right so that's kind of our plan let's get into it alrighty so we've progressed a little bit more. Uh, we have a wood shield that is level 3. We have a club that is level 2. And we have a burial chamber here. So there's a couple objectives in here. Uh, one, you want to stay alive. Uh, these are very dangerous places. Two, you want to do a lot of exploration. Uh, there's yellow mushrooms in here. They're a decent uh, beginning game food source. Uh, three, you want to get the skeletons so that way you can get the bone fragments to upgrade all of your pieces, uh, making this much easier. And four, the most important one, is you want the certling cores. Uh, we'll show you those when we get there. Um, basically they're red and black boxes that glow. Uh, you need five of them minimum so that way you can make a smelter and a kiln. Without that, you cannot use any of the bronze that you mine up so it is useless. So it's going to be very hard to see in here, so I won't be having a lot of footage. Uh, it's extremely dark in here. So basically, there's three ways. There's a right door, a straight door, and a left door. That's like that in every one of these that you come into. So what you do is pick a direction and stick with it. So if you go right, always make sure you hug the right wall. And then when you come back here, it'll bring you back to the main, hug the right wall again. And then same thing through the left and you will hit every single room every single passage and you will know where you've been so pro tip there let's get into it all right didn't even have to go very far there was a certain core boom love it always check the corners very important uh, skeleton there. He's fine. Let's block him. See, when you block him, you are able to do critical hits because you stagger them. More skeletons coming. Stagger, hit, hit, done. Hit, hit, done. Boom, there we go. That is basically what you're going to be running into in these rooms here. Now you will see some areas where there's raised land. Make sure you check it carefully uh, because you can find amber pearls or coins or anything like that. And there will definitely be a use for them later on. Unfortunately, I got none here, but that doesn't mean that you won't. Ah, you want to kill these as soon as you can. These body piles, they are spawners. They will have more skeleton spawning. Oop, there we go. So when you see them, destroy them ASAP. Priority number one. And there's a chest. You got some rubies, got some arrows. Most importantly, certainly cores. There's another ruby. Amber pearl. So now we have four certling cores. Hopefully we can get one more. And then we have the minimum that you need. Because uh, when you have five, you can actually just destroy whatever you had created. So if you made the kiln first to get charcoal, you can very easily destroy that. And that will allow you to then turn around and make your smelter. There's our fifth core. So at this point here, we could leave if we want. But ultimately, I want to be able to have uh, one of each. So I don't want to keep taking them down. So I'm going to keep going through here. And nothing much there. 
we go. There's an evil bone pile there. Get rid of that. Could eat some more. There we go. Very dark in here. I do apologize. I won't be showing many of these. This is probably the only one I'm going to show, just so you kind of get an idea of what is here. Ooh, don't forget the bones. And a skeleton trophy. Yeah. So you could, of course, bring a torch in here, but then you wouldn't be able to use your club. Okay. And that's it. Cool. So that's the end of the cave. And we'll meet up in the next uh, chat point. Alrighty. Here we are with our brand new toys. We have our charcoal kiln and we have our smelter. Smelter. So how this works is you put the charcoal kiln down and then you just sit here and fill it up with wood. You hold up to 25. Uh, sometimes if you hit a nice little leg spike, it'll allow you to put in a little bit more. And then you pick up the coal, put it in here. Uh, it can hold up to 20 as well. And then on the other side here, this is where you actually put the items you want to be smelted. And then down the little uh, lip on the front here, this is where the ores will come out and this is where the coal will come out. So in order to do that, we go into our storage and we get some of our stuff. We're a little encumbered right now. <laughs> so we just walk it over here, throw it in the smelter, 10 at a time, there you go. So that is how you're going to be able to get your first bronze and tin. Uh, apparently I can't get through this door. There we go. Uh, so that will be how you get your first bronze and uh, tin. And you can easily turn that into uh, copper. Sorry, copper and tin is what you get. You can easily turn that into bronze by getting uh, two bronze and one tin. And then it'll show up on the top of your list here. I don't actually have it unlocked because I don't have the items for it yet. But as soon as you get them unlocked, you will get them. That leads to another thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, the, the lore in this game is that your character actually knows every single thing that you can build uh, in this game but you forgot it so the way to remember that is by picking up the item so if an item requires me to have copper as soon as i pick up my first copper it's going to unlock everything um, that is built with just copper or any other item i have before and that's about all you need to know for smelting for right now one of the ways you can cheese things a little bit early is you can only knock down these beech trees, right? So use the beech tree and ram it into the birch tree. Eventually it will break. I've been at this for a bit, so I'm surprised I haven't broken yet. There we go. So that is how you can get some fine wood earlier than you normally would. So this is one of the best ways I've found to mine. You mine underneath it and eventually when nothing is touching at all, we still have a little bit here. Uh, when that happens, the whole thing will come crashing down. So that's what I'm going to hopefully be able to show you today. There we go. There we go. That's how it crumbles. Ooh. I don't know what finally made it crumble, but it did. Then all you do is just walk over and get all the loot. That's it, folks. Now, when I first started, this was all basically a big hill like this. And now after taking out the copper, this is what it should look like when you're done. So if you're just mining that top copper, you're doing it wrong. All right. So you've been at it a while. You managed to smelt yourself up a nice little pretty stack of copper. You've got a very good smelting um, thing going on here. Just quickly fill this up. And the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get yourself a cultivator. Cultivators are amazing for anybody that likes food in this game. So what you have to do is select your um, cultivator on your hotbar when you want to use it. And you have different options here when you right click. So what you want to do is you want to cultivate the land. 
and it will cultivate in a circle and you just go around cultivating the land. It's very simple. It does use up a fair amount of stamina, so you might have to wait for a second, like we're almost out here. There we go. And then after everything is fully cultivated, all you have to do is get your seeds from storage. Now you can also plant uh, beech seeds, fir cones, and pine cones. Those will grow trees. So those you generally need to have about two widths apart, like for these boards here. Whereas the carrots and later in the game turnips, they only really need to be planted one uh, apart from each other. So um, a few good ways you can do it. What I do when I'm planting my carrots is I hit C and it changes. You can see over here in the left corner, walk one. So that makes you walk slower and you can just sit here and plant as much as you want. Now when it comes to planting, I do not recommend ever eating more than half of what you plant. Um, I guess that's more for, for barley and for uh, flax because you only get two. Now with carrots and turnips seeds, you'll actually have the option here after we get our first carrot, there will be another option beside it. And that there will allow us to replant the carrot and get three more seeds. So essentially you have to do harvesting for it twice, but you're going to be able to get uh, three for every one that you get. So it's a pretty good um, system there. But that's all you have for that um, tree. If you want to see that, it's the same thing. Find a plot of land, cultivate it get yourself a seed. I'm going to quickly grab that. You're planting your tree. You plant it. Boom. Right there. And when you look at it, carrots and everything else in the game will do the same thing. It says healthy. So if you plant something that is too close, oops, as you can see it says needs more room to grow. So you have a couple options. You can just punch it out and it'll go away. And then this one will be healthy. You can punch this one out, that one will go back to being healthy, whatever. Now when you are farming, you cannot have anything covering the skyline. You need open visibility to the sky. So you can't build the second floor to it. Uh, you can't build it under an overhang. You've got to be careful with trees. Uh, these are actually all okay, so they're no problem. But sometimes trees really come in at an angle, so you've got to be careful of that. And that is pretty much planting in a nutshell. Alrighty, I uh, just want to take a minute to talk about a few important issues um, that I think some people encounter and don't understand. So, uh, first one is, and the reason I'm doing these tips is because I don't want anyone to get discouraged from playing this game because it is fantastic. If you ever have any questions, uh, you know, throw it in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer it for you the best I can. So the first one is Mob Spawn. Now, mobs are not supposed to be able to spawn anywhere in the radius of a workbench or a player structure. So you can take advantage of this by putting workbenches everywhere. So I'll pull up my hammer and I'll just pick a random item like, uh, like a wall. And when I try to place the wall, it shows me the white line. I am inside of a crafting station. So if I go over here, it shows me I'm inside of another crafting station. That means I can place as many things as I want. So you can just walk around your entire base and make sure that there is a white line all the way around your base. See, I have my line that goes right to here. Uh, it doesn't go any further, but nothing's going to spawn in the water anyways. Um, not yet with our current... Uh, playthrough because we haven't gotten out into the actual ocean because even though I'm in the water I'm still in the meadows and you can see that by looking at the mini map up here. It shows you where you are So you're not in the ocean until you're sometimes way way out there Even though you might be right on the shore or way off in the ocean. You're still considered part of this biome So nothing will spawn there uh, So we go all the way around we just make sure that nothing spawns now there has been some disagreement where some people say I have workbenches all over the place and things still spawn, what do I do? Well, the other thing you can do, and this has been 100% play tested, 
is you get your cultivator and just cultivate the land because nothing will grow on land like that is like this uh, I actually just kind of ruined some of my farm here um, actually no I didn't I didn't want the cultivator <laughs> oh man ignore that previous tip you want the hoe to level the ground this is what you want you don't need to have cultivated land you need um, land like this now I personally play on very low vegetation quality graphics it's not because my computer is garbage and can't handle it because my computer is actually pretty good so you put it on high and this is what you see now a lot of times if there's a mushroom right here it's very hard to spot it so when you actually turn down the graphics you can see it much easier so if you do see some difference in my videos where sometimes it's you can see the grass like this and other times it doesn't look the best that's because I was probably out foraging looking for resources uh, but that's kind of beside the point there um, next thing I want to talk about is the importance of walls so I went AFK the other day I was in my house I was nice and safe uh, just sitting by here by the fire like I normally do and I came back from eating my dinner and all I heard was smack 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 and I came out here and there was a grayling that was out here beating on the smelter now I don't know how long he was beating on it for but it only had about 10% loss of durability so to fix it you just bring out your hammer right click and then go to repair boom repair it to full um, but they can do that on these walls they can do it on here and let out your boars they can go in here and destroy all your crops and then you have to start back at the beginning so you definitely want to have walls in an area where mobs cannot spawn and I just showed you by walking around the whole base that I have workbenches all around so they are not going to be spawning so now I need walls to keep out all the external threats uh, these wall or these doors went down really quick um, as far as degradation goes these walls will never degrade past 100% no matter what the weather is but your doors will so you can fix this by putting up a little roof structure and, and keeping the water off it uh, because any structure in this game that does not have a roof will degrade with the exception of roofs and these walls here and these walls here everything else will degrade over time uh, smelter and kiln I haven't really seen any effects to that so I would include them in the do not degrade as well as uh, beehives but everything else does degrade like all the structures the wood floors the wood walls uh, stairs doors all those things they all do degrade and last thing I want to go over is a house tour we never we never truly did this so this is the house very basic for now we're gonna be uh, talking about what I want to do for this area in general uh, we've got all of our roast over here uh, we have 12 in total so per campfire you can actually fit six of these cooking stations but I like the look of you know two three or four a little bit better because it's not just super crowded uh, we have our cauldron here which we can make all sorts of different things uh, we'll actually talk about food for one second I don't want to get sidetracked so if you take a blueberry you get 15 health 20 stamina if you take a raspberry you get 10 health 20 stamina but if you use Queen's Jam you get 30 health 40 stamina and you get Queen's Jam by using eight raspberries and eight blueberries will give you four of the Queen's Jam so you are losing out on a little bit of food but you're getting better food so when you get into the mid and the end game uh, food is definitely important to your survival also set up a little station here for some comfort so the way comfort works in this in this game uh, look right here when when this goes away uh, it says resting comfort of nine so when you first start out you can get comfort of one which gives you I believe five eight minutes of resting if I'm not mistaken and then every level of comfort you get above that will increase your rested bonus by one minute so right now I'm comfort level 9 and that's because I have a roof over my head there's a bed there's a deer rug there's fire to keep me warm there's a chair a table I think the table actually counts for two and a banner so that gives me a comfort level of 9 so whenever I go somewhere I'm gonna to want to make sure I get this rusted buff because if I don't have it my stamina won't regen as quick 
you can actually click on the little birdie guy here and it shows you the active effects. So resting, when you are, have the rested uh, buff, your health regens 50% quicker and your stamina regens 100% quicker. So if you're doing a lot of running somewhere or fighting, this buff is super important. Um, the resting buff is not as important, but you could build a structure around a rock, let's say, give yourself a, rest, a rested and a resting bonus, and you sitting here hitting that rock for zero damage will be increasing your skills and your stamina will be uh, refreshing super, super quick. So enough about that, back to the house door. Uh, I've got some torches here. I did actually have to move the boars a little bit further away from the house because boars and gray dwarfs and graylings are afraid of fire. So you do not want to have fire near them. Uh, it will set them in a frenzy and then make them run off or start breaking the enclosure, whatever. And you can actually use that tip when you're out fighting uh, gray dwarves or if you're harvesting copper or whatever. You just set down a campfire and that's going to keep them away from you. So if... I know this is a very small scale, but let's say this one plank here was copper. If you had a campfire here, 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 and here, and you're over here mining it, the Grey Dwarfs will not be coming over to you because they'll come over here, they'll say, ah, fire, and run away. Now, they still have a range attack where they can throw a rock, so they can still hurt you, but this will prevent them from being, you know, all up in your face. So, that's a little tip you can use. Uh, I've got a little storage system set up here. Um, it's not great. It, it's not great, but it's not bad. It, it serves its purpose right now. Um, there's my beds. And then up here I've got my workstation. So I've got my anvil with my forge. And then I'll put all the other improvements here, as well as up on top here. And my workbenches. I've got them set up here with a tanning rack and a woodcutter, or chopping block, sorry. Uh, so they're getting the benefits of that as well, and I'll be able to put more things up as well. So in total, you're going to be able to get up to like level 6 or 7 or something like that for the forge. And I think it's around level 5 for the for the workbench. I could be mistaken, but that's what we have. So we also have our little portals here that take us... Uh, so this takes us to uh, the other person's base that I'm playing with. And this will take us to our copper. So one thing to note with portals is you cannot take metal in any form other than nails. So I couldn't bring back raw copper, I couldn't bring back raw tin through a portal. Even after I smelt it, I still can't use that through a portal. But if you have the materials, so like you can make um, bronze nails, you can actually bring that through a portal, which is important um, because boats uh, specifically use bronze nails but they don't use bronze themselves so what a lot of people do is they go off on their voyage set up a portal break down their boat get all the resources back and then they have a portal between here and that other place that they can go through freely whereas if the boat took actual bronze you wouldn't be able to do that so that's kind of a nice thing is you can actually use the portals to your advantage on that and the last thing I want to talk about is kind of my plans for this. Now in my other world, um, I actually kind of built a village out of it. So, you know, one building was for my fishing hut, uh, one area was just for smelters, one area was for my farm. It wasn't all super close like this and I had stone paths uh, going through. Um, and you had a nice little area to walk through. Uh, I'm going to try to get a hold of the server owner for that and see if I can get on there just for a few minutes and uh, just walk through and, and show you guys what we had done. And I want to do something like that similar here uh, today. Well, not today, but <laughs> for this playthrough, I, I want to be able to create a village um, as opposed to just one big base area. That's that's kind of what, what I like and that's what I want to do. So... Hopefully that gives you a little bit of vision into what I'm looking for and the direction that I want to go with this. So I've just been working on my base and I get a message that the forest is moving. This is one of the in-game events that you get. Where you get swarms of enemies all attacking you. Let's quickly eat. 
And we'll just swap these guys all super hard. Because our gear is awesome. And then we get out of there for a sec. I would recommend maybe setting up a guard tower. Uh, or something. If you need to, but... This isn't bad. The event will end on its own anyways. Yeah, the event will end uh, eventually, so you just have to kind of ride it out. If you get the event that has trolls, um, they are much stronger than regular trolls, so be careful. Um, definitely keep them away from your base, because if you're, you stay in your base safe, these guys will beat on the wall for a bit, but at the end of the day it wouldn't really do much. See, the forest rests again, it's over. With the trolls, they will wreck your base. Alright, so we did it. Got uh, the ability to get on the old server here and we're gonna do a quick walkthrough. Could be about five minutes or so, so let's uh, get into it. So this is my house. Uh, it's got the Raven Throne, um, the table. It's got all three of the different kinds of uh, pelts. Uh, it's got the banners, it's got the um, I want to say chandelier, but that's not the word. Um, hanging brazier. It's got the upgraded bed. And yeah, I've got a bunch of personal storage along the walls. So if you wanted, you could actually put walls like this on both sides. And then you could have some hidden storage behind if you're playing PvP or something. That's just another identical room to this one. Uh, it just doesn't belong to me. This is my bee area, so I've got all the bees up on here, and a little fire here. I used to have that just to keep the uh, gray dwarves away from uh, when I didn't have a fence here, but now obviously I don't need that little piece. Then we have our main structure here. Absolutely massive. <laughs> so all along this side here, you've got a whole bunch of different storage, crafting mats, stone, ammo, seeds, uh, money, trophies, everything. I had to get a little creative with the roof. The roof is actually, I think, two or three blocks higher than this. But I just kept putting more supports because the roof kept breaking. Um, all the crafting benches are here. The artisan table, the stone cutter, everything is here. And we've got a little cooking area here. This is kind of the kitchen area. And we've got three fermenters. So very happy with how this turned out. Took a very long time. Got some banners out front, and this is what it looks like from the front. Looks very cool, especially with the little uh, trees in the front yard there. Over here, I just harvested them, uh, but this is where the crops go for the turnips and the carrots. So, nice little area over here. Then we kind of walk down the stairs, and we've got our dock over here. Now this door doesn't need to be here, we just have it here simply because we want to keep stuff out uh, until we get a fence more over on this way. But the dock goes that way, it's the same on both sides. A little stuck there. <laughs> there we go. And yeah, so basically you can just put your boat right in here. That was no good. Uh, let's see if I can survive. Nope. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Didn't mean to jump off the edge there. <laughs> well, that was a little embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah, here's the rest of the docks. We've got a whole bunch of different uh, reinforced chests here. So as soon as we pull in from our voyage, we can just come here, throw in a bunch of metals, and then do whatever we want to do from there. Uh, this is our smelting area here. I like it. You put the coal in all on the one side, you go do a lap around, and then you can turn around on the other side and you do the same thing, but with the ores themselves. And when you want to collect it, just go right down the middle. Nice and smooth. Uh, got a little kiln area over here. Uh, we don't use it too much anymore because you can easily get coal and certain cores from the ashlands and the uh, swamps. So, we really try to avoid using our wood on this because it goes through a lot of wood. It's really not great. Following the path here, we go to our next little building. We have our portal room. This is what it looks like. 
It's very hard to do circles, so it took me a little while. Let's get this lit up here. Oh, I'm out of resin. Um, yeah, these are all the portals we've got. Uh, we're not using all of them. Like, some of them aren't connected. Um, like, they're not connected to each other. <laughs> but yeah, we just have it ready to go for when we want to go out. Uh, very, very happy with how this turned out. And we go to our second last area. We just have some crops here. We don't actually use these for crop farming. Uh, just for a decorational piece. And then we've got our fishing hut. So a nice little dock off the end here. You can grab your fishing rod and catch some fish. Fishing in this game is a little bit boring, but it's uh, it's a good way to get fish. The only way to get fish other than if a storm comes up and they and the tide comes up, then you can get them that way. But other than that, it's, yeah, you need them for fish wraps too, which is a good food. Then we get to our last, second last area, the windmills and the um, spinning wheel. Requires a roof. I have to get a roof for it. Um, yeah, so with this here, you just come to the back of it, throw in up to 50 barley, and it will turn those all into these. Barley flour. Oops. And the last thing just to kind of go over is a tree farm. It does not have to be this big. Let my stem regen for a sec here. Does not have to be this big whatsoever. But it's massive. It's between four to five trees wide. And you can see it just goes on and on and on. And uh, since it is on a bit of a hill, you can sometimes go up to the top. And then it'll knock like six or seven rows down. So you don't have to do as much chopping. Really, really great to have something like that. Grab these here. Oh, I'm full. Yeah. Well, this is the base tour of the first world that we beat the boss, um, the fifth boss anyways. Um, obviously including the first through uh, fourth boss as well. So yeah, very much loving this game. If you've got uh, $20 and a Steam account and a decent PC, I would very strongly recommend it if you do like the survival game style itself. So that's my spiel on selling the game. This is my house that I'm very happy to have built. Let's get back to the other world. All right, party people, this will mark the end of the second episode in our Valheim Let's Play series. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please smack that like button and don't forget to subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.